All right, guys, we're back for another Vintage Cube here. Um, I think of this pack. I'm actually half tempted just to take swords to plowshares and try to wheel the smuggler's copter, or the smuggler's copter and wheel the recruiter of the guard. Um, yeah, because this pack's not that good. And, like, swords to plowshares is kind of like one of the most unconditional removal spells. It's very strong. Uh, we could also just take Smuggler's Copter and try to wheel Recruiter of the Guard or Mutavault. You know, I think I'm going to try to do White Weenie in this one. And I like Swords to Plowshares quite a bit. And it's just the most efficient, probably strongest card in that pack. With the most likelihood of having a card wheel. So Mutavault, um, the Recruiter, and the Smuggler's Copter would all be great cards to wheel for the deck that I'm drafting. Well, I've, I've essentially with my first pick, said I want to draft, which is White Weenie. Now, Soul Ring is in this pack. Soul Ring is a busted card. That said, Mother of Runes is very strong in the archetype that I'm looking to draft. But how committed do I want to be to my first pick? And what does Soul Ring go with in the first pack that is that much better than Taking Mother of Runes, i.e., what will I wheel? Well, there were great green cards in there. So, Roflos is also a pretty strong option here. But I will tell you this much. I actually think Mono Green is a bad deck in this in this format. I don't like the deck at all. I think it's kind of bad. Knowing that Soul Ring is the best card in the pack, and that in a competitive... like If I had to win this, I would take it. I'm still going to take Mother of Runes, because I kind of want to see how good this deck is, and I want to send a signal to cut it off based on what was available in that first pack. And I very much so like Smuggler's Copter, um, especially in this cube. I think it's a very strong card. Okay, Stoneforge Mystic is a great card to pick up this early for White Weenie. Um, not seeing a lot of other Weenie cards, but Stoneforge Mystic this early means that I can prioritize picking up artifacts or equipment artifacts, um, which should be pretty strong if I have Stoneforge. The power of this deck goes up quite a bit if you can get Umazawa's shit. Who all is in here? Alright, no one I know. So we're definitely building towards a certain type of deck. Namely, a Death and Taxes. Now the hope is, is that no one else is trying to do the same thing. Because if they are, both of our decks are going to be rough. Or I'm going to have to go into like a multicolored Death and Taxes build, like Black, White or white-green, but the black-white version is probably a little better. Okie doke. Well then... Hmm. Sword of Fire and Ice is a very strong card. I think either Kitchen Finks or Banisher Priest will wheel. I actually don't mind Banisher Priest in this list. I'm going to pick up my first equipment to go with my Stoneforge Mystic. Typically speaking, I would not pick up the sword over either one of those two cards. I do think there's a strong chance one of the two will wheel. If neither wheels, then that really tells us something. But we don't have a horrible base basis. These cards are not a horrible basis for like playing like a two- or three-color mid-range deck as well. And I think getting a relevant card for Stoneforge is important. Um, I don't think the equipment tends to be that highly picked. Some of it does. Like, Skull Clamp in the right deck tends to go earlier. Okay, I'm not really happy with this pack. So what do I do here? Is White Weenie even going to be a thing? It may not be. A lot of good combo cards in here. We have Dark Petition, Blooming Marsh, and Lion's Eye Diamond. Sylvan Library is also not terrible. Lyra Dawnbringer is kind of marginal. It's a mid-range killer. Revel Arc is pretty marginal as well. Do I keep sending the signal? I mean, Lyra Dawnbringer is an upgraded version of Baneslayer. Eh, 
All right, guys, I'm going to take it and hope that the packs are just breaking poorly for us. And I think I'm a little bit rewarded here. I think there's a higher chance that a Danto Vanguard comes back around than the Palace Jailer. And Palace Jailer is exactly the kind of card I want in this deck. Uh, Blade Splicer, I'm not a huge fan of Condemn. Uh, that's not the kind of card this deck wants. It really wants to be attacking. Uh, this is rough, too. I do think my deck's open, though, from what I've seen. I don't want Bane Slayer. I really don't want Gideon Jura. Maybe it is just Legion's Landing just to get some early, like, cards down. I'm really not high on it. It is good against Control. Tangle Wire is so marginal in Powered Cube, though. That I'm going to take it. All right, my, my deck, I believe, is open. What was the other card we were hoping to come around? It was the uh, the Tutor Effect. But I am going to take the Smuggler's Copter here, and I'm going to start prioritizing one drops pretty highly. Uh, Mana Tithe is fine. Not an exceedingly high pick. I'll pick up an Enlightened Tutor. Um, it could be playable in this. All right, so both of these cards came back. Um, I think that actually, and actually in this cube, Banisher Priest better because folks are not going to prioritize removal as highly, and they're going to have decks like Show and Tell and stuff like that, or like Eureka. And Banisher Priest can be really good against like the Eureka and Show and Tell decks. Um, so they Show and Tell and Emrakul, and you're just like, bam, Banisher Priest, go, you know. And it's like you know the game just ends there because they expend two re two resources to win the game, and then they're just you know totally behind. Um, and we're going to kind of play this as like an aggro control deck. Um, so we do need more controlling cards, like aggro control cards. Uh, so like Thalia's are really good in this deck. Um, any sort of taxing creatures. You want the best clocks and the best taxing creatures. Palace Jailer is also pretty good against like the show and tell style decks, the Eureka decks, because, you know, it's it obviously does the same thing. And it requires that they attack you. Lyra, I'm not really high on playing. But I'm going to leave in for now. It's actually not a bad sideboard option against, like, the mid-range decks. If they, like, spend a lot of the removal early, and then you can go to the air and lifelink, it's very hard for them to race it. Um, although five mana is quite a bit. The top card for this in four mana... Like, the top cards for this deck in four mana are Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, Elspeth, uh, Knight of Rant, uh, and then the Geddens, the two Geddens. So, Ravages of War and Armageddon proper. Um... I'm not going to be playing against any of these cards. I probably dislike Pyroclasm the most. I'll pick up the fixing because it shouldn't still be there. Yep, this guy came around. I like this card. Really just because it's it's wrath-proof, it's hard to remove, and it allows you to use Smuggler's Copter. That's kind of a lot of cool things. Okay, again, kind of a kind of a dud of a pack. I do think Sorcerer's Spyglass is playable. Um, I'll take a Concealed Courtyard and hope to get, like, um, some black-white cards. Ugh. It's definitely not Wall. Wall of Omens. I'll pick up this thing and have to be as happy as I can be about it. Man, we're kind of missing on these packs, huh? Ancient Tomb, what does that do for me? Not a whole lot. Angel of Invention is the card I suppose I will take. Yeah. Kind of unfortunate. But I do think my, my draft... I think my deck is open. I, like, just seeing what wield. You know, I think someone took the Tutor, the, uh, the Recruiter, Yeah, we're missing heavily here. Hmm. Well, I guess we take Elsbeth. Or, I'm sorry, Elish Norn. Yuck. Not very happy about how this uh, second pack has gone so far. Maybe there are two folks in white. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to stay the course because I do think that this deck is open. I really... Like, just based on the wheels that we had... Don't get me wrong, someone else is in white, but I don't think they're in aggro white like I am. I think they picked up the Recruiter as, like, a tutor piece for, like, a, a Jeskai Twin deck. We may want an Enlightened Tutor for this deck. I mean, what does it get? It gets Legion's Landing. Okay, so it's basically either Spectre Procession or Wasteland here. We are light on playables. The Procession may come around. I don't have a lot of pump effects. Wasteland will not come around, though. Eesh. Alright, yeah, I'm going to take the Spectral Pross. Thalia, not horrible. Hangerback, likely not to come around. At this point, we may be playing Angel of Invention. She's not a horrible card, but it's also really not what you want to be doing. Uh, yeah, Terminus is not for this deck. It's probably just a three-mana removal spell. We really want to be hitting creatures, though. Because we have a lot of... Uh, 
non-creature spells. Like, this deck really wants to be, like, 16 creatures or 17 creatures. Um, I am kind of glad we picked up the Sword of Fire and Ice decently early. Okay, so I, I don't mind Honor of the Pure, and it works a lot better with Spectral Procession, but like we were saying, we really do need creatures, and Leonard Relic Warder is a card that deals with artifacts and enchantments, which is a, an effect we do not currently have, so I think we want this guy. He's a good two-drop as well. Um, and without the creatures, the Anthem effects are not that great, even though the Anthem does go decently well with Spectral Procession, but we did just add a Thalia to our deck. So we have Spyglass, Leon and Relic Warder, Thalia for some of our taxing effects. Banisher Priest kind of attacks. Um, Palace Jailer just kind of overwhelms him with cards. What do I think of this build so far? Well, it's medium. It's medium. I really don't want to have to play Lyra or Angel of Invention. I'll probably play Angel of Invention before Lyra if I had to main deck one of the two. But I think Lyra is probably better... Um, is a sideboard option. Like, there's certain matchups where they're just not going to want to see that. Alright, Sword of Light and Shadow is interesting, but I think I want uh, Restoration Angel as just another dude. Or, I guess in this case, Lady um, to attack. We have Blade Splicer, which it combos with. It's not horrible with Banisher Priest. It's not bad with Leona Relic Warder. Um, if we get another piece of equipment, which we just passed one there, it's not bad with Stoneforge Mystic. And actually, that sword may come around. It's not the best of swords. Um, ideally, with Stoneforge Mystic, though, you want, like, Sophie, um, Umazawa's Jit, or, or Jite, however you want to say it, or Batterskull. Batterskull is kind of a tragedy to have in your opener, though, and I think with Stoneforge, you tend to want to have two pieces of equipment. Um, I don't think you want three, but I think two is fine. I guess Lyra does kind of also combo with the Restoration Angel. Actually, Restoration Angel and Palace Jailer is also a pretty cool combo. It's actually kind of a beating. We don't have a lot of one-drops, which is kind of, uh, where the rubber is intended to meet the road with this deck, so I, I do need, like, four or five of them, is what you want. I mean, Legion's Landing's not optimal. Other Runes is a one-drop, but it's not an attacking one-drop, like the two ones is what I'm talking about. So I don't make this deck the best it can be. Well, we get, like, four to five one-drops, and we get an Armageddon, and then it probably is... It's going to be about as good as it can be. I mean, like, if I wanted to put a Christmas list up, and I guess it is close to Christmas... Alright, we're gonna take Concealed Courtyard here because there's a possibility we may draw we may want to play some uh some white black cards. Like Vindicate is not bad. Um uh, uh, Persecution, if it's in the cube, is not bad. Um There are a couple others. I mean like Unburial Rights is fine too. Yeah, we'll pick it up. Um and then uh, I kinda can't think of it. The Title of Scholar is not bad. There's a couple. Vindicate. I think that's already bet gone around in the cube though. Um, Shriek Maw? It's probably the card we would play the most. It's an additional piece of removal, and if we decide to go white-black, we could play Shriek Maw as just a 2-mana Doomblade, or we could play it at 5-mana and have a decent decent evasive body that removes something. Um, yeah, we're getting cut. So someone is in a, a white deck that does have some aggressive cards in it, I think. They have to know they're getting cut as well. It's not often that you see folks draft this deck, so I tend to feel pretty secure when I force it, or more secure when I force it. I The thing that screwed me up is I, I don't think they evaluate cards the same way I do in the deck, uh, which is not to say that they're wrong. Uh, sure, mana fixing. I'm not going to play any of their cards. Um, I do not think in the, this deck that, that we're likely both drafting that um, the 1-1, one, one, the Tutor, the Imperial, not the Imperial Recruiter, um sure this. Um, Alright, Red Deck wins is open again. No surprise. Uh, I do not think... Alright, well, cool. I do not think that uh, Recruit of the Guard is better than Smuggler's Copter. I think Smuggler's Copter is a better card for the deck. Three mana is just a lot for a 1-1. It's very slow. Um, Alright, Critters, Critters, Critters. Yes, I do see the Mox Sapphire, but I am... I'm in a place in life where creatures are very important to me, and I'm going to take this Mirror Crusader and hope to wield the Unexpectedly Absent as, my additional, as an additional piece of removal. Because I also want to cut the Lyra Dawnbringer. I don't want to play her. I think she's bad. Uh, and Mirror Crusader can just shut down some decks. Like, if you're playing against Mono Green, like, Mirror Crusader with a couple pump effects, like, Honor the Pure, or just like, you know, uh, a pump effect from, like, an Elspeth or something can just end the game on the spot. It's very quick clock. Um, it can kill people out of nowhere. Honor the Pure, also not bad with um, Spectral Procession. So I guess we kind of do have more creatures. I mean, Legion's Landing, we have to treat as a creature that has kind of 12. Um, Spectral Procession is basically a creature, so that's 13. 
So we're basically at 13 creatures. Stoneforge is kind of a weak creature. I mean, it has a powerful effect because it finds my Sophie, but... And against blue-red base decks, uh, Sophie's obviously quite strong. But red is also a color that can deal with Sophie quite easily as well. And unfortunately, the sword itself does not have protection from red. So, you know, there's there's cards like uh, Fiery Confluence, um, Braid. Um, I don't know. I don't think Smash Smith of Rings is in this cube, but Arc Trail, etc. Yeah, again, not really great. I mean, I'm probably going to take Gideon of the Trials because it acts as a creature. I wouldn't mind the Rashad Port, and it may wheel. Winsua Peace would also be fine in this deck because it just thins from lands. But I'm going to pick up the Gideon here. Okay, Brimaz is great. Um, just one of the best three-drop beaters there is for this style of deck. But again, like we're very short on one-drops, and we would much rather have some one-drops right now and cut this Lyra Dawnbringer. Uh, we're kind of high on three-drops as well. And again, Thalia is not looking at her best in this deck, because I have a lot of spells. Like Thalia it becomes better and better when you have more and more creatures. Um, so here's the hoping. Fingers are very crossed that we can get some more one-drops before this... Uh, before this draft ends. And if we're not going to, we're probably going to take a card like a Maria Angel um, over Oblivion Ring, I think. Yeah, I think a Maria is more correct than than Oblivion Ring, because I already have an Oblivion Ring effect. Alright, well... I mean, History is probably the only card I can play in here. Someone else is probably on this deck, and they're sucking up all the one-drops. Um, I do not want to play Lyra. Lyra is a sideboard card. I would prefer to play Angel of Invention over Lyra because it's an Anthem effect. So, there's that. Um, we can go bigger and cut Stoneforge and Sword of Fire and Ice and put in, like, Angel of Invention and Lyra. I actually do have a fair number of Angels here, so that's a thing that could be done. The problem with this deck, again, is going to be the one-drops. Alright, there is a one-drop. I'm going to take it over pretty much anything, because this deck is so starved on one-drops. Um, if I can get one more, I'll probably cut some threes. Or cut this Mary Angel, probably. I think I'd rather have threes than a Mary Angel's just not. It hasn't aged well. It's fine with some of the Anthem effects we've got, but... I don't know. And it, it makes flyers. But, again, I think I just prefer to have the early early action, just like, you know, one drop, two drop, three drop, go. A curve. Like, it's... The deck is intended to be played on a curve. That's how it does best. Uh, if we hit the Unexpectedly Absent, I will cut the Banishing Light, I think. Maybe not. We have good ways of dealing with, like, Planeswalkers. I have the Sorcerer's Spyglass. Alright, uh, this is a two drop, so it will be played in this deck. Um, I think, tentatively, I'm gonna cut the Banishing Light, because it's very slow removal. Our Remorseful Cleric is a good, like, main deck sideboard card. And we have one more... Oh, actually, I can play... All right, unexpectedly Absent. Um, over Arid Mesa. Unexpectedly Absent is a card that I very much so like. It's basically Memory Lapse against Permanence. Um, you don't want to do it against ETB cards. But, you know, they drop a Planeswalker. You just put it back on top of their deck, force them to recast it again. It just feels pretty good, man. You know what I mean? So, there is that. All right, Rashad and Port, great. Did not get the Wasteland, but Rashad and Port is not bad. Sometimes all it takes is one turn of interrupting their mana just to secure a win. Um, because we're going to be a little bit slower, you know, Rashad and Port tends to do better with just like a uh, another Angel. Yeah, um, Rashad and Port tends to do better in decks that have more one drops because you can go one drop and then like you know their next turn on turn two just stop their mana and then turn three play another one drop stop their mana turn four two drop stop their mana and it just you know you just snowball them into a, a, a loss especially if you're like a three color deck so this is uh, 25 cards um uh, sure no imagination <laughs> I guess I'll take Avacyn. Maybe I'll put it in against the show-and-tell deck. Fiery Confluence should not go that late. Almost ever. That card is stellar. Um, if you're playing red, whew, it is one of the top four drops, in my opinion. Um, and the reason I say it's like one of the top four drops, it's not... So it, it has multiple decks that it wants to go in. It wants to go in blue-red, and it wants to go into just red deck wins. Um, but the flexibility of the card is just so high um, that... I think it's pretty tough to, to say no to. We do actually... So we have 14 creatures, but we have more than that. Um, we have Spectral Pross. We have History of uh, Banalia. Uh, we have Gideon of the Trials, which is essentially a creature. It can be act, acts like a creature. 
Um, yeah, so I don't think this deck is the best, but I don't think it's the worst. All right, that's 15 lander. I think I want to be a 16 lander with this deck. So what are we cutting? I think it's probably a 3. This is actually a 2. Is it Banisher Priest? It could be Banisher and we just sideboard it in. Well... Is it Banish Banisher or History? I think Banisher is better than History. I do think this is a 16 lander. Because we don't have any acceleration. We don't have a ton of one drops. So we're going to definitely want to hit our lands. We don't have Geddens. But this deck's okay. I mean, it's, it's really just an aggro deck. It does not have Geddon to back it up. Which kind of stinks. It's kind of like one of the top things you want to have for this list. Um, it could be wrong to start Banishing Light as well, but I'm kind of worried about my own Thalia. Honor of the Pure is probably fine in this deck. It's going to be a gross-style deck. We do have some decent flyers. We have Resto. We have uh, Spectral Pross. Uh, the Remorseful Cleric. We have Evasion with uh, Mother of Runes, which is kind of cool. We have some decent-ish removal. We have the Swords of Plowshares, the Leona Relic Warder, um... The Palace Jailer, and... Yeah, hand looks good. Uh, one drop, two drop. I like it. I would have rather been on the play, but hey, what can you do? Uh, here's the not drawing. Um, Alright, what are we going to do here? Force me to discard? No. Alright. I don't mind seeing land. So, Stud of War, go. Question becomes, like, what do I lead on? I think... Is it Stoneforge? Alright, whatever. I think it's so catastrophic to have to draw the sword that I'm just going to get it here. And then I probably just Spectral Procession next turn. It could blow up my board. Is this a Fiery Confluence? No, it's not Fiery Confluence. It's an X spell. Okay, they mind twisted me. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. My Twist is a pretty high variance card against my deck. I mean, I'm a top deck driven deck. I'd rather not lose my honor of the pier. I would have rather lost the planes or the sword. All right, they're gonna faithless loot. Okay, go ahead. If they reanimate, that could be bad for us, um, unless it's a red or a blue creature. All right, they sh threw a counter spell in the trash bin, and they got rid of a Blightsteel Colossus. Well, Swords of Plowshares is a great answer to Blightsteel Colossus. I'm going to put my sword into play. Attach to a flyer. They have a flash, dude. Yeah, whatever. Well, are they dead next turn? They're in trouble next turn. If they're not dead, they're pretty close to it. Even if they tank here, I think I'm fine with that. I'll just exile their uh, Blightsteel. They have Counterspell. All right, Manamorphose. They're digging. They are digging for an answer, and they're looking to tinker, I think. They could also wipe the board. All right, High Tide. All right, they may have a combo. What have you got? High Tide seems bad in their deck, but they have a lot of non-islands. All right, Gush. Cool. You find the Tink. Could be like a Massacre Worm. That'd be very bad for us. Oh, my desire. Okay, well, let's see what they got. Tendrils of Agony. Am I dead? I could be. Did they get there? Oh, they can remand the Tendrils, but they can't recast it. So they have to blink of an eye, remand blink of an eye, but they can't recast it. Um, I don't know how many spells they've cast this turn. They're going to be close to killing me, but I don't think they kill me. So they can get me for a lot. Blink of an eye on... Okay, that. Remand that. Draw into a card. And then Tendrils are at six. All right, so I'm not dead. Or am I? That's a lot, but I don't feel like I'm that behind right now. I feel like I still have some game going in here. Going on here. Um, they could try to Yawgmoth's Wheel next turn. What else have you got? All right, that's it. All right. So... What I think we do is this. I think we just go for the Gusto here. Uh, we land a Thalia. Um, I can't cast Swords to Plowshares, so if they end up having, like, a... Through the Breach is not viable next turn, right? Pass. 
Palace Jailer is also good against their their Blight Steel plan if they have Tinker. Could show and tell here. Cool. Inquisition away. My thoughts are my swords of plowshares. Cool with me. And just dead. Okay. That's one of the things that White Weenie tends to be pretty decent against is um his combo. Up oh, sub. Um. Sorcerer's Spyglass. Does that stop mana abilities or no? I don't think it does. Okay, so we may not want Sorcerer's Spyglass. Although, they could have Memory Jar in there. They did have Tinker in their deck, I assume, because they did show us Blightsteel Colossus, which went back into their, their uh, deck. So that's a thing that could be happening. Um, I'm not too... I mean, I do have Banisher in, in deck, so I'm not too worried about, like, Blightsteel. I think I have a lot of answers to that. Um, what do we think of this hand? This hand's marginal. I'm going to keep this, but I'm not a fan of it. I'm on the draw, though. Okie doke. Well, I like that as a draw. So it looks like their deck is very um, artifact heavy. And if I cast down a signet here, I feel pretty good about being able to just get it. Okay. Force him to redraw it. Done. Yep. I think next turn we're probably just going to go for a Rich Port plus Honor of the Pier. But we'll see what they get up to. Okay, got me. Well, what have you got? I don't have a horrendous clock on them, so... Mind Twist again, not gonna, I don't think, shine as much in this match. I mean, it's good. Like, it's very good that I don't have those four extra cards. Because um, if they go for, like, a Tinker right now, like, I'm in some Trubs. Like, I need to draw. I guess I don't have, like, I'm not 0% to hit. Alright, Grim Tutor. That's a lot of damage. Is it gonna be enough? What are they going for? I'm hoping to hit pretty much any creature here. I'm going to tap my Mother of Runes. If they have removal, that's fine, I think. But I want to force them to have it. I'd prefer to draw some sort of interactive card here. All right, kill me next turn. Or it could be Mana Drain or something. That'd be fine, too. Go ahead. But they're basically at the kill me next turn phase. All right, high tide. Okay. Is this going to be like a, a time spiral? Should probably turn off auto yields. I, I bet this is like a time spiral or something like that, which is pretty good for them. They're going to net one mana off of this because of Electromancer, if they have time spiral. Six mana is a significant amount. All right, repeal. On what? On Mother of Runes, okay. They can still time spiral here. Oh, they have another... Um, land. They need to really draw seven here, so is it just going to be uh, Mind Slayer again? I think that's okay for me, because I still have Lethal. Um, unless they hit with it, but... I'm still feeling pretty strong about this. Okay, they did have Time Spiral, so that's pretty good for them. Pretty, pretty good. And they get to untap all of their mana, and they have a ton. So I could be dead here. Um... Yeah, could very well be dead. All right, high tide again. Yep, so you have tons of mana. If they have the Tendrils win, they just win, more than likely here. Yep, Inquisition of Kozlik, cool. I don't think it really matters what they take, because, I mean, I, I'm, I'm dead either way, so they're just trying to get Storm Count here down to five cards. But they have a boatload of mana. 
They have Palingrom, they can make Infinite Storm count. So do you have it, my friend. We shall see. They took away the Remorseful Cleric. My guess is they probably do have a Yawgmoth's Will. Alright, Grim Tutor. Well, they're out of black mana unless they have an untap effect. They could have, like, a turnabout. Um, Frantic Surge would also do it. They're at a very low life total, though. Is this going to be a turnabout? No, uh, Thing in the Ice. Okay. Well, Thing in the Ice still doesn't stop me, even if they bounce my whole team. Okay, so they can make the black mana here and we're dead. Alright. Mana Morphos does do it. Okay, Tendrils. Okay. Well, I'm actually... Am I dead here? I'm actually not. I'm down to two, so they may have miscounted. That's it. Okay. Well... I wish I had a mana up to uh, mana tie them. Not that it will really matter that much. Well, I guess if they have Yogwill and they don't have a Swamp, we could still win. Okay, Gush is fine. Especially if they can't kill this turn, then I can leave up Tide, and they're down two land drops. Which tends to be better. Yep, you got it. Um, we'll crew here. I don't really care if this thing dies, but I'm going to crew just so I have two blockers. So they cannot steal the monarchy. Okay. Play their land out for the turn. And that's it. Maybe they miscounted on their storm there, or maybe that was just all they could do. I'm going to play this out first. Getting the Trials is actually secretly very good against Storm. Uh, I cannot cast it here. They probably just... Uh, they blocked the Splicer. Cool. But they are down to four. Alright, under the Pier would have also been kind of nice there. Probably could have won. Um, wow. That's all I got. One of the things with Storm. Storm is just finicky, and High Tide did not look at its best in this deck. So, anyways, go 2-0 in this first game. Um, we probably got a little lucky, too, um, through a time spiral to have stayed alive. But our deck's consistent. Their deck is powerful. Um, what you trade in consistency, sometimes you gain in power. But, you know, on the A plus B decks, you know, like the channel decks, the storm decks... The storm decks that built to their best potential, like, are the best decks in this cube. I am, like, fairly certain. I feel very confident saying that, because I've, I've had some of... If you go through my historical videos, I've had some very good Storm decks, I think. I think they were pretty well built. Um, and they got a lot of what they needed. And they were strong. Like, they were just, poof, rough. Like, um, but you really got to get there. And I've never really been a huge fan of the High Tide versions of it. I've always liked the uh, the Will versions of it, like the four-color versions. More than the Tide versions of it. All right, so, Steve is a monster. Well, we'll see what Steve is a monster is playing. Hand's fine. Uh, yeah. This is a Keeper. Uh, go ahead, my friend. Um, hopefully a green deck. I think this would be best against a green deck. Turn one discard? No. Cool. Alright. Did not want to hit land there, but what can you do? Hopefully we can uh, counter a two drop. That'd be nice. Go for it. Oh, yes. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Manatide value for days. Manatide, getting Manatide is like one of the worst feelings in the world. 
Let me tell you what. All right, Sorcerer's Spyglass maybe next turn. It's not per se that we'll see anything in their hand that we want to mana tithe. Plus, I think it's more important to get a clock down, and I don't have anything else going on next turn. So if they cast something that, like, I can source for Spyglass, it'd be great. I, mean, I guess the way, way I feel bad is if Liliana. Liliana the Veil here would be rough. We'll play around days. Uh, Lotus Petal or Palancron? Or Bargain. This is mana abilities, right? Palancron, I think, is correct. Or is it? I think it is. So they want to bargain me. Like, they can't draw all that many cards. Alright, Thirst, cool. I'm just going to play out the Palace Jailer next turn. Just keep the pressure up. Keep drawing into more cards. Palancron gives them a Storm Loop. I get it. Bargain is pretty powerful. Alright, they got rid of both Bargain and Kron because they're not going to have time to in life to, to do that, I don't think. Alright, here, I think... I think we just do this. We're going to feel pretty dumb if we just miss on this. If, if like, they play, like, a, you know, a show and tell or something next turn, but what can you do? All right, Thalia is a big game. So if we don't lose this tur this next turn, so basically like through the breach, if we don't get through the breach or sneak attacked out with Emrakul, because they have seen a lot of cards post Thirst for Knowledge, then we should probably win this with a Thalia and a Stud of War. These are the kind of decks that White Weenie wants to face. Um, sneak attack would have been another good choice for Sorcerer Spyglass to play around, because they could sneak attack us here and just kill us outright. Uh, but they did ditch the Palancron. At a minimum. And they're doing nothing. Well, what have you got? This. Uh, this. I think I save the Stud of War just in case they have a Wrath effect. Yep. keep on limiting their life total. And they're pretty dead next turn. Yeah, they're dead next turn. Alright, Rishboard, also kind of nice to have around. So, evidently we're just going to face Storm decks with our White Weenie Death and Taxes deck, which I don't think I dislike. What do I change? Nothing. I could put in Enlightened Tutor, but what does that do for me? Uh, not much. I do like uh, Gideon of the Trials against Storm. Gideon of the Trials is a beast against Storm, because, like, Storm tends to not have a lot of interactive cards. So if they're trying to kill you with an uninteractive combo, like, you know, Tenrils of Agony, then Gideon can just stop them from winning. And I believe Gideon also stops you from being milled, so if it's, like, uh, the, the Brain Freeze combo... Oh, yeah. This hand's great. So we have Gideon, which is a, a good cyborg card against them. Mana Tithe for their turn two play. And then Sorcerer Spyglass to stop any, like, you know, shenanigans like, uh, you know, Palancron or possibly Yawgmoth's Bargain. I'm certainly going to keep this. Uh, Gideon, I think, is a huge game. Now, if they have turn one discard, they could either get the Mana Tithe or the Gideon, which I, the two targets I think they would generally opt to get because I don't think Sorcerer Spyglass tends to be very good against Storm. All right. We're going to see, like, uh, Thoughtseize or an Inquisition of Kozlik. Or Duress. Duress tends to be worse against my deck, though, so I'm not as worried about Duress. They may be getting jebated by, by Mana Tithe two times in a row, which would be pretty savage. Uh, we'll Mana Tithe whatever they play here, pretty much, and then I'm going to drop the Sorcerer Spyglass, unless I draw, like, a Thalia. Thalia would be, like, the one card, and maybe not even then, I don't know, because I really do want to get Gideon down by turn three. Now, I do want to see them play a card here. All right, well, I don't think I play Sorcerer Spyglass, and I think I still leave up Manatai. They could be trying to play around it. But, I don't know. We shall see. Well, they're making land drops like a champ. Oh, uh, we could be seeing a... Oh, gosh, we can't think here. Um, a Thirst on my end step. 
All right, well, I think what we do here is just play out Sorcerer's Spyglass to see what we're working against. Leave up Banatai, and then next turn, look to resolve a Gideon, because I do think for Storm for variants of decks, Gideon's going to be close to unbeatable. All right, Regrowth. There is a Thirst for Knowledge, which is what we're going to see here. Now, I think they're going to get punished if they try to cast it because they have a Mox Sapphire. They want to discard in hand. Um, this is a pretty easy uh, Yogmoss bargain. And if they try to Thirst here, it's going to feel so good. Because now we know what's what. They did an Imperial Seal. Yeah, they fully committed to playing the Thirst for Knowledge and pitching the Mox Sapphire um, for value, so they could go, you know, basically get a two for, or what is it, a, yeah, two for one. Or technically, I guess a two for two, right? This is draw three, not a two for one. So, discard two cards, essentially, because they're discarding Thirst, plus the Sapphire and draw three, which is powerful, but if they go for it, they are going to eat this Tithe. And they could just not go for it. I think I'm playing around, or play around what I'm doing. Okay, that's cool. I am fine with that. But then it also takes them off Imperial Sealing this turn if they want to play around the Tithe still. Which I think is okay. I, mean, I, I pretty obviously, I think, have it. Because I haven't played anything out yet. I think they have to reasonably assume I probably do. I'm playing in a way that is, even if I did not have it, like would probably cause them to play around it. Their deck does not appear to be exceedingly interactive, so I'm not uncomfortable, like, just slamming a Gideon here. I still actually do hope to draw planes, so I can still uh, tithe, you know, whatever else they end up doing. But see, this is kind of screwing up their whole line of play, because they're not getting to Imperial Seal here, which Imperial Seal is just very slow, and you'd prefer to Imperial Seal and then uh, Thirst into it. Alright, Gideon of the Trials. God's love be with you, my friend. Now, if they have a counter, that could be rough. Alright, there's my emblem. And good luck against that. In next turn, we'll just start playing dudes now. Like, I think this just like makes it very difficult for them to win. Because their card engine is turned off. They don't go for it again. Wow. I wonder why not. Do they only have two islands in deck? That couldn't be. I think they should have gone for it there. I don't know why they did not. Alright, well, there's a Thirst. I'm going to let that go. I cannot stop it. One presumes that they're going to discard the Mox Sapphire if they don't draw something worse. Go for an Imperial Seal after playing a land to still play around Mana Tithe, because I'm, I'm very obviously showing Mana Tithe here. Alright, they discard two cards. Interesting. Okay. Well, do they have an underground sea? No. All right, well, we're going to attack. And I think this turn... I'm just going to get my Splicer down. I could have wanted to play the Remorseful Cleric, but I think I need to get a clock on them. And this is 8 damage a turn with the Gideon, which is a 2 turn clock as opposed to, like, you know, a 3 turn clock. So I think it's correct to do this. And to couple up with that, I mean, I can manatize whatever they do this end step or this next turn and then play out the Remorseful Cleric uh, plus the Honor of the Pure to up the clock even more. So there is that. They're certainly hitting their lands here, but I. I don't feel good from... If I'm them, I do not feel very good right now about this game. Because they have a lot to get through. They have to destroy this Gideon to actually kill me with Storm. Okay, well, they're going to do something here. I am very heavily representing that I do have something to do here. Like, I have a Tithe. Which is fine, because I think if it slowed them down by, like, essentially three turns... If it's taking them off curve for three turns, it's just really good. Even if it never gets cast.
Okay, they're gonna regrowth uh, this. That's cool. Again, like, they really... I don't know how they do this here. Alright, yep, you got it. Do not know how they do this here. Because they're going to be discarding a bunch of cards this turn. Regardless, I still actually wouldn't mind drawing a land. Because I'd still love to leave Tithe up. Like, I'm obviously showing Tithe. And I think they're they're playing around it as much as they can. They did kind of get owned by it the first game. And, like, folks often do. Like, no one expects the Mana Tithe. Uh, even less so than probably Force Spike. Um, it is a complete Miser's card. Because sometimes it just gets there, right? But ostensibly, they haven't played their Sapphire out yet, so they're probably going to pitch that here, unless they want to... Well, they may discard two because they just don't have a lot of good stuff going on in hand. And they're going to discard anyways, maybe. But I do think they're in trubs. Do not think this is going good for them. That's it. Best draw is still playing, so I like to go under the Pure Plus. Um, Remorseful Cleric. Alright, they ditched the Mox Diamond. Okay. And then have up Mana Tithe on their turn. Alright, yep, again, a best draw. Gonna play Honor of the Pier, just to buff these gentlemen up. Get to the gym. And it's a lot of damage coming at you. What is this, uh, 13? We'll play on a Remorseful Cleric. Um, yeah, even if we... So this guy is a what? He's a 5-5. Five five. Yeah. So he is lethal next turn on his own. So even if they even if they do sweep the board, they're quite dead. They have to basically kill Gideon, sweep the board, and win. <laughs> well, kill Gideon, sweep the board would be enough. Uh, but they're probably not going to be able to win in the same turn. And then I still have a creature... And they have to do that all while playing around Mana Tide, which is all decently difficult as well. I think this game is just over. Well, yep. Mox Sapphire. Cool. We're going to see another, like, Time Spiral Mox. Alright, Lion's Eye Diamond. Yes. But your graveyard is irrelevant because I have Remorseful Cleric in play. So, like, I, I feel like we have a tap on this. I feel like if they cast Yogmoth's will here, which is the card they want to have to make Lion's Eye Diamond and Lotus Petal work. So, like, how this works is they cast out a bunch of rituals and, like, artifact mana. That's cool. Don't care. Because you're dead next turn, so you have to draw it right now. Um, but, they're out of black mana, so they have to sacrifice Petal to get the other black mana to get into Yogmoth's will. So they go down to three, cast Cataxium Probe into will, sacrifice... Lotus Petal, that still doesn't work. Like, I still think they're just kind of screwed. So, because in response to casting, and I just sacrifice Remorseful Cleric, eat their whole yard, and say, whatever, dude, and you're at one life off of the Git Probe here. Because even, yeah, Toxic Deluge is castable, but that doesn't win them the game. It just puts them to one. No, it puts them dead, because they can't kill the Golem. Yeah, I don't think there's a way for them to win this. Like, I'm trying to think of through what it could be. It could just be Time Spiral. Like, a Taxium Probe and a Time Spiral would probably be their best option. Um, and then, like, do I Mana Tithe that? I guess that could work. Yeah, that would be their best bet. So, Gataxian Probe into... And they can go to three... They can go to one, one life. Their life total doesn't matter at this point. So, Gataxian Probe into Time Spiral would actually probably be their best play. That would be their best play. And I still, like, it's going to be tough. Their Storm Count's going to be higher. So, if they have it, they could win that way. I'm not going to exile their Graveyard because I want to play around Yogmoth's Will. But I think they're just dead. Like, I, if they got Will, they lose the game. Because Remorseful Cleric deals with Will. That's one of the kind of the pluses to picking it up as it deals with uh, graveyard-based decks pretty well. Hmm. But I'm going to stop speculating on what it is they may or may not do, because I don't know. I don't know what it is they chose to do. They're in the tank pretty heavily, so maybe they just finally read my Remorseful Cleric and realized, hey, I can't win. <laughs> um, if they have a draw seven, they could win. They could still find a way to win. And I think the best one to do it would be Spiral. Spiral, Wheel. 
Yup, Brainstorm, got it. So they're into the card they found. That's fine. If it is a time spiral, do I mana tithe it? Or do I just leave up mana? I don't know. <coughs> Pardon me, guys. Opponent's thinking very hard here, so that either means like they do have a way to do it, or they're just they don't know how they do it and they're just tanking. I think they're just tanking. I don't think there's a way they beat me here. Because getting the trials does make it... Yeah, they can't win with Storm this turn. They can they can bring me to a negative life total. Yeah, can't lose, can't win. So, they can mill me, and I just wouldn't draw cards anymore. I would just win with whatever I had on board. <laughs> um, they could life me, you know, down to a negative number and have a lot of life themselves, but eventually I'd beat them down with Tendrils. So, they have to remove Gideon. And they have to kill me this turn. Or they have to deal with Gideon and remove the whole board. Or I suppose they could also Tendrils. Alright, this feels like a Spiral. Feels like a Spiral. Yep. Are they targeting me? They're targeting themselves to untap their lands. Okay. Well, the other problem here is when they go to do it, they're going to want to sack the Lion's Eye Diamond to have mana on the backswing. And if there's anything relevant in their hand, they actually can't... Like, anything relevant to their combo, they can't do that because I'll just sack Remorseful Cleric in response to the Time Spiral, which is what I'm, not, I'm now thinking they got. What is this targeting? It's targeting uh, Gideon. Okay. Gideon is now gone, so they have removed Gideon. That is step one. Step one accomplished. Now, Time Spiral, I think. They are playing around Mana Tithe very heavily. Now, the problem they're going to run into is... What? They're going to have to use Mana off Lion's Eye Diamond, so they are going to have to get rid of their hand. So they're going to sack the Lotus Petal and have six Mana... Put Time Spiral on the stack. I'm going to target it with Mana Tithe, force them to sack the Lion's Eye Diamond, discarding their entire hand, and losing one of the mana off of Lion's Eye Diamond, and then ideally hope that one of the pieces of, uh, of interaction in their hand... Are they going to sack the LED in response? They held control like they were. Okay, Brain Freeze. Do I want to get rid of this stuff? I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I don't have a better play to make. I don't know if this is correct or not, because if they find Tendrils, they probably win here. So maybe I didn't want to do that. But they're go at it. If they have Tendrils or a way to find Tendrils in hand, I guess it does increase the probability of them finding Tendrils to get rid of that stuff. And they're at 9 already, so maybe that was actually bad on my part. Um, I mean, given if they had most of those cards in hand, I'm already probably losing. Alright, Thought Seize, yep, cool. I don't. If you have Tendrils, you just win, so just go ahead and cast it. Maybe I should have tied it there for that reason. I don't have a way to stop them, so... If they have it, I'm just dead. And I feel like they probably do. If they don't, that really stinks for them, because they're just going to lose the next turn. I lose a Banisher Priest. Alright, High Tide. Yeah, whatever. Is this a Palancron? They already have Lethal, so I don't know why they'd waste time. If they have Tendrils, they just win. They should win. That is what they should do, exactly. And if they do not, well, okay. Manamorphose. Alright, we're, we're still doing this Song and Dance. Maybe they don't have the card, and they're trying to draw into it. They made blue-green, though. But they can only produce one black now, unless they have a ritual effect. 
Yeah. All right. They just didn't hit it. I, I do think I probably misplayed by sacking my uh, my Duder to get rid of their graveyard. I don't know why that game went as long as it did. Quick break, guys. It was really bizarre. My opponent played it. Um, I, it should have gone that long. If they didn't have it, they didn't have it. So we'll be back momentarily with this white weenie deck that is doing pretty well because we played against two kind of janky storm decks. Mostly because of matchup. I don't think the deck's that great. But, you know, hey... We'll take them where we can get them. At a minimum, you know, we're still staying eternal. We've at least got a 2-1 finish if we don't get a 3-0. Right back, guys, once we get a new match. All right, guys, we're back. And uh, looks like we're into match three here for the white weenie cube. Yeah, hand's fine. Not great. One drop would make it better. Worst draw in turn two, sword of fire and ice. Part of me kind of wants to just get Porcelain Legionnaire down. It really depends on what they do. All right, white. All right, white's fine. I'm just going to play out this lass here, this core lady. Get my sword and say go. And then we could either uh, Blade Splicer or Mirror Crusader. I'm probably... I don't know what I'm going to do. All right, this thing. I'm happy to draw that. Say go here. Happy to have drawn that. Alright, Rashad and Port, cool. Alright, cool. Kind of want to draw mana here. What's the worst thing that could happen here? The worst thing that could happen here is a one mana removal spell or a two mana removal spell on my porcelain legionnaire. But there we go. That's on my my legionnaire. Maybe I should have put it on something else so I can double block. Yeah, you know, in retrospect, I probably should have put it on Stud of War to double block with the uh, Stoneforge Mystic and the Student of War or Warfare. Because the most common removal is either going to be like it's going to be exiling effects. Um, and they have a couple instant speed ones. I mean, they could have the three mana Council's Judgment or Oblivion Ring or Banishing Light here. The hope is they do not, but we'll see. Unfortunate if they do. Okay, a Banisher, a Priest. Alrighty. I take my five and have to like it. Do you have one mana removal, sir? That would be the worst. If they do not, they can double block it and lose basically most of their team. Actually, no, they don't. It has first strike, so that's not going to work. Start mowing down their team. Unexpectedly absent will be nice. I would like to draw another land to use that. Get Blade Splicer down, get two more bodies. So we're in the mirror of sorts. Um, okay, they're just going to chump it. They're not going to block it at all. All right. I'll get my guy back. Happy with that. And now I can double block the Brahmaz, and I'll lose both my things, but the Brahmaz is out of the way. <clears throat> they could have an Elsbeth or something, but I feel pretty good 
with the source for Spyglass about stopping planeswalkers and unexpectedly absent to stop blockers. I just get a lot of value. Hmm. Okay. Well, another cool thing we can do is unexpectedly absent the honor of the pier and just blow out their blocks. Which is not bad. I assume they have to continue to attack, or do they want to stay back? Well, I guess we'll see. They have an attack with Brahmas. They're still going to lose their cat. That's they opt to do. Tying down my mana doesn't seem that productive. They're better off just playing another threat. Okay, that sucks. What did we vote for here? Alright, you got it. I don't know why it doesn't show on the card anymore. Okay. Okay. Okay, Winter Orb is annoying. So now I am hoping to draw another land. Do they have removal? They do not appear to have removal. Okay, go ahead, my friend. They can untap the Rashadden port and try to tap down my other planes. It looks like that's what they want to do. But that's going to keep them off mana as well. That's assuming they think they're winning this board position. And they very well might be. All right, they have another land, so they probably are going to tap down my Rish port. Unfortunate. Um, we, if they don't do that, we are hoping to hit a plan, because I think Unexpectedly Absent should allow us to win this game. All right, this is lethal. No, it's not. That's all at me, right? Yep. Let's take four. Down to three. Okay, Lodestone Golem. So now I need to hit a land drop here. Alright, unfortunately I did not. So am I just dead? I think here we are just dead. Yep, we're just dead. So they their, their cards worked out pretty perfectly there. I, I don't think Winter Orb is going to tend to be a good card in this matchup. But it worked out quite good there. Amiria Angel seems pretty decent in this matchup. Um... What do I not like in this matchup? Remorseful Cleric, well, it flies. Legion's Landing is life gain. Sorcerer's Spyglass seems kind of marginal. I think we're going to go this way with it. 
We could go big white and try to play an Elish Norn against them. This is a mirror match, though. I do think we have the tools to win it. Um, not the best of tools. History of Benali is also interesting since it's kind of card advantage. Could be better than Thalia. Maybe like Archangel of Invention. I like Amiria better than Archangel of Invention. Now that we know about the Winter Orb, though, we'll just, you know, we have to make sure we stay ahead on board. And if we had gotten to, I think if, if Richport was kind of the deciding card there, um, if we had had the ability to cast our unexpectedly absent, I think the game would have gone uh, quite, maybe not unexpectedly, but quite differently. <laughs> maybe in a more expected way. Winter Orb does not tend to be a great card in the mirror match, though, I don't think. Car hand's great. So, turn one removal, turn two, first striker, or smug copter. I think smuggler's copter is probably better. So, we'll pretty much just pop off whatever turn one play they have, I think. Play on a smuggler's copter to develop here. Okay, Thalia, cool. Yeah. All right, they can start trying to race here if they'd like. All right, Scrap Heap Scrounger does not worry me. I am going to attack here. I'll oh, get rid of that. I think we're going to leave up the Restoration Angel to kind of surprise them. Another thing we could do is Resto... Um, I guess that doesn't work. Resto Thalia to block. Actually, we are going to do that. We're going to Resto Thalia to block, kill their Thalia, um, eat their Scrap Heap Scrounger. This is all pretty much Millhouse. Yes, I do. Okay, Banisher getting what? Thalia? Okay, Angel. Cool. Mother of Runes is annoying. Just hoping to hit a land here. Now they can use their Mother of Runes to pass through damage, uh, but I think I think that's going to have marginal gains. They can kill the Mary Angel for two mana, more than likely. Alright, Soulfire Grandmaster races at a minimum. I think it makes the most sense to leave back the Smuggler's Copter as a blocker here. Get in there, birds. Yes, please. 
because Smuggler's Copter does blank Mother of Runes. And we do have a sword coming in next turn. Okay, Angel Invention is pretty big. It's a big game. It can also make... Uh, it only has one flyer. They can just make it big. Okay. Got a 5-5 five, five in the air. Well, I can block it here. That is quite fine. Can't protect against the Sword of Fire and Ice. And this is where I think the opponent's plan starts crumbling. That's it's fine, man. Doesn't do anything. Ooh, Palace Jailer is a huge game. Alright, well... Now they have the ability to attack me. Palace Jailer should remove the, Arch or the Angel of Invention, which I think is going to be nice. They have like a disenchant skull clamp, okay. Yep. Could just block with a Merry Angel here. Do I care? Probably not, actually. What's under this? Oh, there's a blowout coming coming here soon. Yeah, I don't really care if they draw more cards. Not a worry to me. Let's just do it. Get rid of their plus one, plus one. I'm going to kill two of their creatures next turn with uh, the Palace Jailer. Because I'll get the Banisher Priest. And when I get the Banisher Priest, I'll get Resto. I'll flicker the Palace Jailer, get another creature card here. They can equip the Skull Clamp if they'd like. Yep. Yeah, this is just a blowout play. And I can actually deal... If I draw a land after attacks... That's not unwelcome either. So, we'll Palace Jailer the Banisher Priest. Okay, yeah, they're just done. Cool. Alright, so we're going on to the next game. Alright. Well, Mother of Runes is a card that we need to be worried about. Uh, we only have, what, a couple pieces of removal... But we do have Sword, and we do have Smuggler's Copter to kind of blank it. And we have a lot of Flyers. Um, we have Resto, we have Emeria, we have Spectral Procession. Um, I guess not a ton. Remorseful Cleric. Which really the only reason to keep Remorseful Cleric in is because it is a Flyer. I think Flyers and First Strikers tend to be what breaks up this matchup. We don't know if they have Jit. Jitte could be a problem if they have that card. They're going to be on the play this time. Well, this hand's either great or... Well, we'll see. It's got some things and some stuff going on. I don't think Mirror Crusader is the worst. Okay, Legion's Landing. Cool. I don't really want them to flip Legion's Landing. They could just play... Uh, well, what do they got? I'm going to say fine to this. I think the common play would be to pump stud on turn two. But I think we're going to see what they do first. Alright, this thing. I'll just get rid of this. Now we've got Bremaz for turn three. We also have Sword we could do. Sword is not terrible. Hopefully they're short on mana. They could just... Okay, they have Mother. 
mother is problematic. You know, actually, I kind of regret this play. I should have played Remorseful Cleric out. Uh-oh, Modo. All right, freezing up a little bit. So if I draw a land, I'm pretty sure I should just go Remorseful Cleric. There's, a, there's an allure to playing out Thalia. Could just attack here. No, they don't. Yeah, I think the correct play is to get the flyer on life. I draw a land that I can just play out sword. So Thalia doesn't really behoove me. Doesn't really benefit me here at all. What flash is in at three? Containment Priest isn't in the cube, I don't think. So I think it is fine to attack with both Brahmaz and Stud of War. Alright, they have something here. Makes sense. Expel. Um, are right, unexpectedly absent for one. Pro white there, dude. That is fine. Any land is still going to be great because then I can remorseful cleric over the top and get rid of their mother. And if I don't, I suppose I still have Mirror and Crusader and I can pump once on the stud. Okay, Thalia stops this plan pretty well. Uh, Miri is the right play here pretty easily. Well, let's think about it. I know what I'm drawing next turn. This will allow me to equip and play my own Thalia next turn, so I'm just going to play this out. I'm going to get in there for two damage with my flyer. And in the minimum, Thalia limits their ability to remove creature cards, so if they play like a 3-drop, alright, Brimaz is, I think, fine. Another option here is just to re-equip Sword. Yeah, I think I just re-equip Sword, actually, as opposed to playing Thalia. The sword has put in a lot of work here. I'll give it that much. I think I'm willing to give them an attack with Mother of Runes if they want to tap it pass damage through. But the backswing is starting to get pretty sizable. Alright, strip mine. It's kind of whatever. Alright, they're going to get the sword here. Cool. Well, that stinks. I guess we should have taken it while we could get it. Alright, Angel. Oh yes, we definitely want to use that. Thalia. The name of the game is just gum up the ground, I think. And win in the air. Okay, well they're going to get a double striker here. What do they double strike? Hard telling.
So is 6 more relevant than 5 next turn? Yes, it probably is. What do I want to give up then? Thalia is probably the best card to give up here. Yep. We'll throw Thalia in front of the bus. And then we have a token to block with next turn off of our own Brimaz. Which I think is good. Mm-hmm. All right, mother. You can't get in there, all of you. All right, and go ahead, my friend. I do think we probably misplayed this. We should have probably killed the mother with sword, but what can you do? Sometimes you make mistakes. We definitely did here. They can go up to four off of their vampire, I think. Yep. Yep. So they have to opt to give their Brahmaz pro... Well, I guess they don't, because they can first strike this thing out of the way and then double strike their other part of Brahmaz down. And then give their Vampire token. Alright, they did not, though. So they're still at three, because my other cards had first strike. They found land here. Now, can they stop me? Nope, that's it. Alright, guys. Well, despite misplaying that last game, so we did kind of screw up a sword. We should have just killed the Mother of Runes. Um, I went the aggro route, but it, it ended up working out regardless. Uh, we ended up going 3-0 with, uh, with White Weenie. Not what I would call a great version of the deck, but a version of the deck that did nonetheless get there. Um, we did play against two Jankier Storm decks, and we played the Mirror, so we didn't really play against, like, any, like, per se... Well, I don't know, maybe the first two decks ended up going 2-1. I don't want to say anything bad against their decks. Maybe they just had bad draws. It was certainly not a good matchup. Aggro tends to just smoke uh, the combo decks of the format. Like, it's the worst matchup you can see. But because most folks are trying to do cool things in the cube, um, sometimes just the, the the pretty medium things can just get there. And I would say this was a pretty medium deck on the whole. I think there was someone else in White Weenie, or a White Attack deck, because we didn't get the one-drop support that you really want to make the deck good, like Kithian, like um, Soldier of the Pantheon, you know, basically all the Savannah Alliance um, over time. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to put this one up, and uh, we'll probably be in the queue again relatively soon. Enjoy, and take care now, guys.